everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Audrey and this is Audrey Curates. Today we're going to talk about something very simple and very important that you know how to act in a museum. So we're going through some basic rules and basic etiquette you should follow when you visit a museum. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I upload content every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. However, the schedule has been a bit of a mess because I am writing my dissertation. So, let's start. Do not touch the artwork. It is very, very, very important not to touch the artwork because on our hands we have a lot of oil, we have a lot of dirt and we have a lot of bacteria. And when it meets a 17th century or a 16th century painting or a sculpture, it tends to cause a lot of damage. Maybe damage that you don't see in one day, but if everyone touches statues, for example, every day for a long period of time the statue will end up discoloring like this one for example poor dog and his nose it is very important to keep safe distance i know that museums will be incorporating social distancing when they will finally reopen but it is very important to also keep your distance from the artworks you don't want to end up like this guy This one you don't want to be that guy do you some museums and some libraries and archives ask you to bring pencils if you're going to go around of course pencils are easier to remove do not lean against walls or cases if you do not pay attention and you lean against the wall you might be leaning against a painting and if you're leaning against the case the case might be alarmed and you don't want to cause the museum to be evacuated on a false alarm next up no food or drink or gum or anything edible museums nowadays have cafeterias with great food pretty expensive but still great food great pastries coffee tea everything you might think of so don't take your McDonald's with you in a gallery or take your Dr. Juice. Running, pushing, any roughhousing, any playing of the sort is deeply frowned upon. You are running and pushing people into very, very expensive stuff. And I'm, when, I'm, when I say expensive is because obviously they, if something happens to the paintings or the sculptures or any other object, they have to go into a conservation treatment, which means they have to be taken off display, they have to be transported to the lab, they have to be treated, which usually ends up um, being a very long process because this, is in, this isn't the only object that needs conservation. And then of course, re-displayed. Where was I going with this? Oh, running. Parents especially, make sure to keep your children in check. I've had an instance where I've seen children run up to an Egyptian statue and just putting their fingers up, up its nose and just beating it and I am very thankful that it did not fall from the plinth it was on. Museums also have lockers or um, cloak rooms where you can leave your coats and your backpacks. If you're going to a museum, don't take a backpack with you. If you can, take a small bag because they will ask you to either put it in front or else put it in a cloakroom or lockers. Usually lockers are about in the UK. It depends on the institution. I have been in museums where they ask for a one pound deposit and then you get the one pound back. There are others that where you use the locker for one pound and they give you 50p back. It depends. And if you're taking a coat or a big jacket, you are going to be asked to either keep it on or remove it. You cannot keep it on your arms because um, if you turn around and quickly, something might be caught up in it or else you knock something over. Now, the moment of truth. Photography. So, many museums ask you to either not take photography, to take photography with no flash, and 
side note, no selfie sticks allowed. So let's start with the bottom one. So selfie sticks obviously are not allowed because, well, it's a long rod and you're flinging it around to take a photograph. But imagine hitting a vase, a vase. Vase? Vase? Meh. A vase. And it's also very dangerous because you don't want to hit people in the face. I had done it once in the in a museum and I feel ashamed because I did not know the rules. Other museums or exhibitions ask you to not take photographs of certain paintings or else of the whole exhibition. So I've been to exhibitions where photography was not allowed. I've been to the Caravaggio in the National Gallery in London a few years ago where they didn't allow photography and I've recently been to the BP Awards um, exhibition in Edinburgh where they didn't allow photography as well. And there are some sort of issues when it comes to photography because when you have an exhibition or you have a painting being displayed, sometimes you have loans or donors giving the paintings to the museum to exhibit and take care of it basically and they do not wish for visitors to come in and take photographs like for example the Caravaggio one I believe there were some paintings from private collections so I think that obviously in their agreement they wouldn't allow people to take photographs because that is actually private property. There are other things. They don't want, for example, images on social media. They want to keep it secret as well. So they want people to experience the exhibition in real life and not from social media. So there are many factors that go into no photography. Last but certainly not least, and we see it in many museums, is the no flash photography. So the flash as many of you know, is a very bright light. And usually, when we have very bright lights, they cause damage. That is why sometimes you go into a museum and the room is a bit dark, because they do not wish the lights to harm the objects or the artifacts being shown. When we ask people to not use flash, is because we are trying to prevent any conservation treatment on the paintings, objects, etc, etc. So for example, if you use flash on photographs multiple times, the photograph might fade, which is not what we're going for here. And of course, photo photographs being so temperamental, you cannot easily conserve them. That is why sometimes when you go to a photographic exhibition, they ask you to take photos, but with no flash. There is also the thing where it's very distracting and people who go to museums do not want to see flashes of light when they're seeing a picture. Just so you know, even if you don't see signs, it is very polite to ask a museum assistant or a gallery assistant as to whether you can take photographs in a museum. When I don't see any signs, I go up to a museum assistant and say, hi, are photographs allowed and they usually say either there are certain paintings you cannot photograph just look at the label or else no flash photography or else in that part of the museum you cannot take any photographs which is understandable it is also very important to be quiet to be silent usually museums are not places where people would like to hear you um, argue with your neighbor over a tree going into their property or else your fight with your husband or anything of the sort. People just want to go to museums, look at beautiful paintings and just sit in quiet and reflect. Be quiet, be silent. If you have a friend with you, you don't need to yell or shout from across the room. Just stay close together. I think that is it. Yeah, I think that is it. I think so. That was a look into museum rules, museum etiquette. So if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe. It helps me out and it makes me so happy. Scotland is very dull at the moment. We have had mist for two weeks and two days of sun. And now it's raining again. I will hopefully see you next Wednesday. If not... I will probably be stressing over my dissertation, so I will see you when I see you, okay? Bye!